In the previous video we installed Putty and used it to connect to our Raspberry Pi. We also discussed how Putty is good for things like command lines, but it isn't actually any use at all if you want to do some graphical interface things, such as using the actual graphical interface built into your Raspberry Pi. It will actually fail if you try to run any graphical interfaces. In this video we're going to install a piece of software called a VNC server, or a virtual network connection server. This will allow us to connect to our Raspberry Pi and access its desktop, as if we were connected to the Raspberry Pi itself directly. So once you're logged into your Raspberry Pi, you simply need to type sudo apt-get install Tight VNC server, all one word, and hit enter. This will download and install the actual software itself for us. And once you've installed Tight VNC server, we simply need to type Tight VNC server, which will initialize the process for us. This will ask us for a password to access our desktop. So you should provide any password here. This doesn't necessarily need to be the same passwords that you use to log into your Raspberry Pi, but it will obviously make things easier if it is. It will then ask you to confirm the password again. And it will then ask you if you want to enter a view only password. This feature allows users to access the display without actually being able to change anything on it at all. But this is not a feature that we're going to need. And so I'm just going to press N for now and hit enter. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is to instantiate a new desktop to actually connect to. To do that we're going to type tight VNC server. Colon 1, which will be our desktop. And then we're going to type minus geometry. And provide a resolution. I'm just going to use 800 by 600 here, but you could use any resolution you choose. And then we're also going to set a depth value of 24. That's going to be the colour depth which is displayed. We can see that this is already running on one, so we can change this to another number. So we can change this to 3. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is to go over to Google. And we're going to need to search for Tight VNC Server. And we're going to select Download now from the options. And we're going to want to download the Tight VNC Viewer file, not the server. Remember to make sure that it's the viewer version that you download. So if you download that, Open up the file and run the application from the jar file. It's going to ask you to select the remote host. In my case it's already remembered the previous session. In my case I also need to change the port to 5901. So if I click connect now, I'm going to be asked for the password for Pi. This is the normal Raspberry Pi login which would have been the Raspberry if we didn't change it initially. We're then going to be asked for the second password, which is the password required for our actual VNC window. And as you can see, as soon as you type that in and hit enter, you're able to see the entire Raspberry Pi window. Because we specified this as being 800 by 600, this is the resolution that the actual window is displayed at. We could of course change this to be displayed at any resolution that we like. From here we have full control over the Raspberry Pi again. And this time if we open up programs such as Midori, which is our web browser, things will look a lot better than they did in our previous view of it simply because we have a fuller screen.
Although, as you can see, it doesn't look as good as it could do, especially not as good as it does in Windows. And this is just a weakness of Midori. There are, of course, other web browsers that we could use. But as I mentioned previously, we're not actually using the Raspberry Pi for actually accessing the internet in a graphical way. Everything that I'm going to be using it for is going to be based on a command line interface. If you're intending on using a VNC viewer to access your Raspberry Pi's desktop on a regular basis, I would recommend keeping a copy of these files extracted into a folder on your computer. You can of course simply highlight them and drag them out into wherever you need to, to access them from. And it's just a matter of running the jar file to actually start the program up. In the next video I'm going to look at expanding the Raspberry Pi's functionality so that we can use it for things like a web server. Which is one of the pieces of functionality that I do intend to use the Raspberry Pi for. So make sure you stay tuned so you don't miss it.